Are you looking for the best pre-built gaming PC 2022? Then you've come to the right place. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. Now in this best pre-built gaming PC 2022 buying guide, we're gonna cover everything that you need to know and we're gonna make specific product recommendations for 1080p, 1440p, and 4K gaming pre-built PCs. So whether you're looking to dominate in esports games like Valorant or League of Legends, play titles like Elder Ring at 4K, or you're just looking for a budget gaming PC to play Roblox, we'll help you find the best pre-built gaming PC 2022. Of course, if you get value out of this video, please give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon, that way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. Let's start off with a critical item that you need to know. The choice between buying a pre-built gaming PC from an original equipment manufacturer, or OEM for short, or a system integrator, or SI for short. What the heck do those things even mean, and do they matter if you just want to buy a pre-built gaming PC? Yes, they actually do. Now, system integrators, or SIs, like Skytech for instance, they take standard PC parts that any PC builder would use, and they assemble a PC. So for instance, they take a graphics card from MSI, a motherboard from Gigabyte, a power supply from Seasonic, and assemble them into a PC. But original equipment manufacturers, or OEMs for short, these companies are like Dell, HP, Lenovo, Acer, and others. They actually manufacture their own versions of these parts. And oftentimes, those parts are not universally compatible. That's what we call proprietary parts. Now, while that often saves them money and it makes their products a bit cheaper, it can also mean it's very difficult to upgrade an OEM PC in the future. So, you need to decide what kind of buyer you are. Are you the kind of person who just wants to turn on your pre-built gaming PC, have a game and be awesome without wanting to tear it apart or upgrade specific components? Then you can buy from either an OEM or an SI without worry. But if you're the kind of person who wants to tinker with their PC, you wanna pull it apart, you wanna put in a new CPU cooler, move it to a new PC case, put in more memory, then you're definitely gonna to want to only buy a pre-built gaming PC from a system integrator. As we go through the best pre-built gaming PC 2022 recommendations, I'll let you know which PCs are OEMs and our product recommendation links down in the video description, which of course we're gonna to continue to keep updated they will also identify OEM PCs. But should you buy a pre-built gaming PC or a custom-built gaming PC? Now there's a difference between a custom-built gaming PC where you get to select every single component from a list of components that are available to that system integrator and a pre-built gaming PC where the system integrator just creates a standard build depending on what parts they have. A pre-built gaming PC, for instance, might list that you're gonna get a B550 motherboard, but not specify the exact model and manufacturer, though some do. In a custom configured PC from someone like Origin PC, iBuyPower, or CyberPower PC, you get to choose, say, a B550 Aorus Elite motherboard by Gigabyte, but you're now relying much more on your knowledge of exactly what parts go well together, and they tend to charge quite a bit more for that level of customization. So what's the better value? Well, if you feel confident in your knowledge of being able to select specific PC parts, for instance, properly pairing a CPU with a graphics card, and you don't mind paying the price premium, then a custom build might be right for you. But I believe that for the vast majority of buyers, pre-built gaming PCs offer significantly better price to performance at every budget level and that's what I recommend. Now, in order to get the best pre-built gaming PC 2022, we of course need the right graphics card, also called the GPU, to play at the resolution that you wanna play at. So I'm gonna break out all of the product recommendations that are down in the video description by the resolution that you can expect to game at in most titles. 4K capable pre-built gaming PCs, 1440p pre-built gaming PCs, and 1080p pre-built gaming PCs. Obviously, anything that can play at 4K can also play at 1440p at higher frame rates or FPS, and so on and so forth. So check out those links down in the description which of course, we're gonna update every couple of days with the best deals. Now, some games are easier to run than others. For instance, a gaming PC that 
easily runs Fortnite at 1440p might need to be turned down to 1080p or reduced settings at 1440p for a more demanding title like Call of Duty Warzone or Cyberpunk 2077. For a 4K pre-built gaming PC, I recommend that you get at least an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 or AMD Radeon RX 6800 graphics card or better. For 1440p resolution, I recommend a pre-built gaming PC with at least an NVIDIA RTX 3060 or AMD Radeon RX 6600 XT or better. And for 1080p, I recommend you get a pre-built gaming PC with at least an NVIDIA GTX 1650 Super, not the non-Super, GTX 1660, 1660 Super or TI, or RTX 2060. Or on the AMD side, an RX 6000 series GPU, except for the RX 6500 XT, which was a badly designed GPU. And the only gaming graphics cards that you should consider are made by either NVIDIA or AMD. Now, very quick warning. There are a lot of pre-built gaming PCs where OEMs or SIs are just putting in absolute garbage to your graphics cards. Now you're gonna regret buying these. They're gonna have terrible performance. Yes, they are gonna be a little bit cheaper, but you will have burned your money instead of saved your money. On the Nvidia side, these garbage graphics cards include the GT710, the GT730, the GT1030, the non-super GTX 1650. On the AMD side, we wanna avoid the RX 550, RX 560, RX 6400 and RX 6500 XT. Now make sure to avoid these GPUs and stick to the recommendations that we previously made. So what CPU do you want for the best pre-built gaming PC 2022? Well, because CPUs have gotten so fast over the last couple of years, as long as you get a modern one, it really doesn't matter in terms of overall FPS except when you pair it with the ultra high end of GPUs like the RTX 3080 or RX 6800 XT. Now for everybody else, a modern six core or greater CPU is absolutely fine for mid range gaming and modern four core CPUs are okay for budget 1080p gaming. Now the absolute highest performance CPUs are the Ryzen 5000 CPUs like the Ryzen 5600 or 5600X and 12th generation Intel CPUs like the i5-12400 or i5-12600K. Just below that are the Ryzen 5000 CPUs with a G in their name like the Ryzen 5600G as well as previous generation Ryzen 3000 CPUs like the Ryzen 3600 and of course the Intel 11th and 10th generation CPUs like the i5-11400 or i5-10400. Now note that if you're doing a lot of core heavy production work in addition to gaming, like video editing, blender animation, or other professional types of work, then I would recommend an eight core CPU or higher. And of course, we're expecting a new Ryzen 7000 CPUs to launch in the fall, but it's likely gonna take quite a while for them to get into the pre-built market. So let's talk CPU cooling and case airflow because the worst thing that can happen is getting an awesome pre-built gaming PC and having it thermally throttle your performance because of a weak cooler or bad case airflow. Now CPU cooling, it's obviously complicated. So here's a very simple guidance. For four and six core Ryzen CPUs and Intel CPUs that don't have a K in their name, low profile downdraft style coolers are absolutely fine. For eight core and bigger CPUs or Intel CPUs that have a K in their name, at a minimum, I wanna see at least a budget tower air cooler or 120 millimeter liquid all-in-one cooler, also called an AIO. For CPUs with 10 or more cores, we wanna see at least a 240 millimeter AIO liquid cooler or a big air cooler. Liquid coolers are more common as they do better during the shipping process than the big air coolers, which can break off or come loose due to the weight and leverage. Now, in terms of case airflow, you wanna be able to see where the air is actually getting into the PC and how hot air is being exhausted out. Now side slits on the case are okay-ish, but we'd really like to see mesh front panels or glass with significant air gaps. And we'd love to see at least two to three intake fans along with one exhaust. Remember, you can get good airflow along with good aesthetics like RGB. So don't settle for a PC that isn't gonna perform its best. So how much memory do you need for gaming? And how fast should the memory be in the best pre-built gaming PC? Well, if you're just gaming, you want 16 gigabytes of memory and you want it to have dual channel, which means two memory sticks, not just one. This amount of memory should be absolutely fine for any gaming, basic streaming to a service like Twitch, 
light video editing, light render work, or other light production tasks. For heavier non-gaming workloads, I recommend at least 32 gigabytes of memory. However, you don't typically find pre-built gaming PCs with 32 gigabytes until at least the $2,500 or higher price point. But remember, if you buy from a system integrator, you can always upgrade the memory by either buying an identical kit to the one it comes with, or buying a brand new 2x16 gigabyte kit and swapping it in. Just remember to jump into the system BIOS and activate the XMP profile for the memory. Now at the high end, you're gonna see systems with DDR5 memory, but just know that right now we aren't seeing any performance differences between DDR5 and DDR4 just for gaming. On the other side of the equation, for ultra budget pre-built gaming PCs, under $800 right now, you're probably gonna get stuck with a single eight gigabyte stick of memory in an OEM pre-built. Now, that should be enough for most games at low settings, but upgrading that memory is gonna offer significant performance, and the best way to do that will be to buy an identical stick to the one it came with. Memory speed, it's a trickier subject, but basically for DDR4, I recommend getting at least 3000 speed memory. I really like 3200 speed, and while less common, kits up to 3600 speed can be found in higher end systems. DDR5 memory speed started about 4800, but 5200 is more common. And again, despite the speed differences between DDR4 and DDR5, we do not see gaming differences between them. All right, let's jump into the best pre-built gaming PC 2022 product recommendations. Remember, links are down in the video description. And of course, we're gonna continue to update that list of best deals every couple days. So check it often for the latest deals. Let's start off at the absolute top of 4K. Now this is gonna be an amazing PC for both content creation as well as super high end gaming. And that is the Skytech Prism 2. Now this Prism 2 is just kind of a generic name that they use for this PC case setup, along with you know typically a high end 360 millimeter all in one liquid cooler and high end CPU uh, GPU combo. In this particular case, we've got the i9-12900K with an RTX 3090. This is going to be kind of tippy top right now until new GPUs come out towards the end of uh, 2022. And even then, it's going to take a while for them to get into the pre-built market. So if you want the, the max right now, this is probably it. 32 gigs of DDR5 RGB memory. It's got a 850 watt piece. This is just basically an amazing PC. If you want the creme de la creme, $4,500. You will pay the price for it. Now, prices have come down in the mid tier and lower end, but still at the high end. If you want the high end hardware, you're still paying top dollar. Another similarly spec PC that I would actually consider $3,800 here instead of $4,500. The difference is this has a Ryzen 9 5950X, just slightly slower than the, the i9-12900K, so I wouldn't really worry about the CPU differences, but the RTX 3090 is the important thing. This has a one terabyte Gen 4 SSD, along again, 32 gigabytes DDR4 in this case, 3600, relatively fast DDR4 memory, slightly better PSU, $3,800. And then just another Prism 2. This is a slightly spec down model. So if you're just focused on gaming, Ryzen 7 5800X, that's a eight core CPU instead of the 16 core CPU with an RTX 3080 10 gigabyte version, one terabyte of Gen 4 SSD, only 16 gigabytes of memory, but that's fine. Remember, that's all you need for gaming. 32 gigabytes is really for high end creator workloads. You can still do a lot of video editing, uh, streaming and other things with 16 gigs and not have a problem. $2,300 though, that's a pretty big discount. And we've seen these types of PCs with an RTX 3080 consistently fall from about $3,200 earlier this year down to $2,200. So pretty good value. Of course, if you want to get an RTX 3080 level of gaming GPU, but you don't want to pay that steep price, you can of course look at an OEM PC. Remember, this is going to use some proprietary parts. However, the performance you're going to get is going to be on par with some of those uh, system integrator models. You just are going to have a rougher time if you ever want to go to upgrade this PC, but you're going to save quite a bit of money up front. For $2,050, we get a Ryzen 7 5800X with 16 gigabytes of memory and an RTX 3080. In a pretty good package here, it does have 120 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. You can see it here top mounted. Uh, the airflow in these is pretty good. 
And remember though, uh, HP manufactures all these parts. This is an HP motherboard. This is an HP graphics card. I will say though, uh, this positively for HP Omen, they've recently made a change to the BIOS on the motherboard. So if you ever did decide to upgrade the memory, this will actually allow you to use XMP profiles, which is how you, when you plug your memory in, you have to activate that in order to have it run at the full speed. It's really nice that HP made that for their Omen uh, lineup. They made that change. I uh, Hopefully they will make that for their pavilion, their low end desktop change, I won't hold my breath, but certainly if you're gonna buy an HP uh, Omen like this, and you wanna save a bunch of money and get the similar level of gaming performance, here you go, $2,050 instead of like $2,300 or $2,500. What if you want 4K gaming at less than $2,000? Well, good news is you can come down to an RTX 3070, we'll give you 60 FPS at 4K at good settings in most games. And if you look at something like the ABS Gladiator, now ABS is Newegg's in-house brand, so they take their, the parts that they sell, they assemble them as PCs and they sell them to you through the Newegg website. This is a really good deal. i7 12700K off, RTX 3070, 16 gigabytes of memory. They're even gonna tell you that it's G-Skill. That's one of the things I really like about e ABS is that they often tell you exactly which uh, parts you're gonna get down to the manufacturer and model of it. So for $1,950, this is pr a pretty beastly PC with the 240 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. CyberPower PC is another good option. Now they both do custom PCs as well as they do pre-built PCs and they often sell them through outlets like Best Buy. Best Buy is a pretty good place to get a pre-built gaming PC. CyberPower PC right here, similarly spec to what we just saw at ABS, but for $1,800 instead, i7 12700KF, 16 gigs of memory, RTX 3070 with a one terabyte SSD. Now you might look at this case and say, Jason, uh, this all looks nice and fancy and awesome, but where is the airflow on this case? The good news is I've checked these cases out. They have big gaps at the top and the bottom for plenty of airflow in here. So don't worry about that. $1,800 for an extraordinarily powerful PC is a great deal. And there's even deals as low as $1,500 if we're willing to come down on the CPU to something like a Ryzen 5 5600X, which is still gonna get most of the performance out of that RTX 3070, which is good. 16 gigabytes of memory, one terabyte NVMe. This is the SkyTech Kronos for $1,500. Kronos just refers to the case style. What we're looking at here is just mesh, which is absolutely great, RGB. We are gonna go with the stock cooler here. So you, as you come down in price, you start losing some of the more premium features. Now, the stock cooler on the Ryzen 5600X is absolutely fine. At some point, if you wanted to, you could spend 20 or $40 and upgrade that to a budget tower air cooler. Relatively easy to do. But even if you never did, for $1,500, it's hard to argue with this level of performance for the price. Let's jump into the best 1440p pre-built gaming PC 2022. And remember, Links to everything are gonna be down in the video description. Check those out for the best pricing and availability. Right now, I think you're looking to spend between $1,000 and $1,500. Obviously, the more you spend, the more features, the more performance you're gonna get, but $1,000 should be able to get you in there as well. Let's take a look at a couple of these PCs. Starting off, we got the ABS Master. Now remember, ABS is Newegg's in-house brand. We've got an i5-12400F, really good i5 12th gen CPU high performance with an RTX 3060 Ti and 16 gigabytes of memory with a one terabyte NVMe SSD for $1,400. That's a really good price. Now listen, uh, at this price point, you're gonna give up a couple things. You'll notice we're using the Intel stock cooler here. The Intel stock cooler for the i5 12400, 12400F, absolutely fine. You never need to replace this thing. Of course, if you wanted to, 20 to $40 will get you there. This is a kind of an interesting case design. All the airflow you'll notice is coming from the bottom up. Don't stick this on a big thick shag rug, stick it on a hard surface, but it's a really, really phenomenal gaming PC. Over to Amazon, we've got the SkyTech Shadow. This is a Ryzen 5 3600 CPU, so it's last generation Ryzen, along with an RTX 3060 Ti, 16 gigs of memory, one terabyte SSD for $1,279. This is a really, really good uh, option. Now there's also one called the SkyTech Archangel, and it's the same exact setup, except it's a white colored case. That's the only difference. These are really, really nice. Now, again, you're going to get the stock air cooler for AMD, which is absolutely fine. This has a little bit of a different airflow setup. It's got one intake and it's got three exhausts. Negative pressure setups work absolutely fine. If you want, you can always get a second fan for that. But in terms of the feature set you're getting here, it's quite impressive. And often you'll see these either with a, like a Ryzen 3600 or like an i5 11400 or 10400. So that's last generation Intel as well. And 
cutting off the price to $1,279, really, really attractive for the performance. And then as we move down in price, we're moving down a little bit in GPU power as well, but still 1440p capable. This is iBuyPower. iBuyPower is similar to CyberPower PC. They both do custom PCs as well as they put together pre-builds and they sell them at outlets like Best Buy. This is what we're looking at here. For $1,180, we've got the Ryzen 5 5600X. Again, latest generation Ryzen CPU, which is great, 16 gigs of memory and an RX 6600 XT with a 500 gigabyte SSD and a one terabyte hard drive for additional storage. This is a really, really nice setup. Again, uh, we're going with stock coolers and things of that nature, but this is a really, really tough deal to beat. Then of course, we got the Skytech Blade for $1,100, so about 70 bucks less. This is also a really good setup. So slightly slower CPU with the Ryzen 5 3600 instead of the 5600X, but does come with the RTX 3060, which is a great graphics card, similar in performance to the RX 6600 XT, maybe just a hair slower. Now the Skytech Blaze refers, of course, to this particular PC case design, so they call anything Blaze that uses this case setup. You'll often see an i5 11400, 10400 in here as well, but for $1,100. Now, sometimes you will see these come down to about $1,000. That's why I think $1,000 might get you in here. But for $1,100, this is a really nice setup. Let's jump into the best 1080p pre-built gaming PCs 2022. Remember, links to everything down in the video description. We continuously update those deals. And I would definitely check them for 1080p gaming PCs because we have seen the biggest price movement this year at this segment. Earlier this year, you could not get anything for under about $950, almost $1,000 in this range. And the great news is that prices have dropped substantially to the point where you can find something like the Skytech Shadow. Now, this one's actually not on sale over at Amazon. It is on sale at Best Buy for about $1,000. We've got the i5-10400F, 16 gigabytes of memory with the Radeon RX 6600. This is the non-XT version, still very powerful at 1080p and can play even many games at 1440p. $999, it's really tough to beat these kinds of deals. Of course, if you've decided you absolutely have to have an NVIDIA graphics card, I would look at, in this range, the RTX 2060. It's more powerful than the RTX 3050, just FYI, if you're trying to compare those two out there. This is a good deal. i5-11400, this is an iBuyPower Pro gaming PC, 16 gigs of memory, 480 gigabyte SSD. It's a little small, but again, as we get towards 1080p, these are some of the sacrifices that we begin to make in order to get that performance. $1,000, not bad at all. This PC earlier this year was going for more like $1,100. Now, coming down in terms of performance, we're gonna see slightly slower GPUs like the GTX 1660 Super, still very, very capable at 1080p, just not gonna punch up to 1440p on most titles. And at 1080p, you're probably gonna be getting between 60 and 100 FPS depending on the game you're running. But Skytech Kronos Mini, so this is actually a shorter PC. This is what's called a micro ATX case. The other ones are ATX full-size cases. This is slightly smaller. If you're looking for something with a smaller footprint on it, Ryzen 5 3600, the GTX 1660 Super, 500 gigabyte SSD. Now, most of these will come with Wi-Fi, which is also really nice. I do really love this case. I love the front airflow on this case. It's all mesh, great airflow on this thing overall, and Honestly, just quite a quality unit for $885. Of course, once we get below about that $850 mark, we get down into the OEM pre-built gaming PC land. Now remember, these are gonna have proprietary motherboards that aren't gonna fit in other cases. These are gonna have proprietary connections on the power supplies, maybe even proprietary PSUs themselves that aren't necessarily gonna go into other PCs, but you're gonna get something significantly cheaper and pretty decent performance. So we've got here the HP Pavilion desktop. Now, HP makes a, a lot of different versions of this desktop. This particular one, we've got an i3-10100. That's a four-core, eight-thread CPU, very capable, with a GeForce GTX 1650 Super. Remember, don't get the GTX 1650 non-Super. That is a garbage tier graphics card. The GTX 1650 Super is actually kind of, despite the naming similarities, very, very different GPU. 
It comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's very important. Once you drop down to eight gigabytes, you lose about 20% of your FPS just going from dual channel two sticks to one channel uh, to single channel. So you definitely want dual channel if you can afford it. 512 gigabyte SSD. Overall, pretty strong performer for about $800. Let's jump into a couple of PCs you absolutely want to avoid. Now, this is just going to go to show you that even good brands put together bad part lists, and you got to pay close attention. So, for instance, Skytech Kronos Mini on the surface looks pretty good. It's got a good case, good airflow. What's the problem with this PC? Well, it's the graphics card. They're using a GTX 1650, $765. You could almost see that. But again, remember for 30 bucks more, we can get the same specs with a 1650 Super, which has so much more gaming performance out of it. It's kind of crazy. So it just goes to show you even good brands put together kind of weird or off part specs. Then you're going to see things like this. We're going to throw a bunch of fancy RGB at you, just kind of overwhelm you with specs like i7 without telling you what generation of i7. Yeah, it might be a fourth generation i7, which is probably older than some of the people watching this video right now. So you just got to be careful. Again, this is a GT 1030, one of the GPUs I told you to avoid. $570. A lot of people say, oh, what a great deal. $570. This thing's about worth a, a doorstop is all you're going to be able to use, maybe a paperweight. And you're going to feel like you've just lit $570 on fire. And then we've got a, a PC that I think is just absolutely horrible and I want to rip my hair out. They call this gaming PC desktop white. Now it looks nice. It, it, I, I like the case, but what are they selling you here for $499? You get eight gigs of RAM, which already isn't great. And you get an i5. They're not telling you what generation of i5 that is. That should be a f big red flag. We're on 12th gen Intel right now. They're all the way back probably at fourth gens, which is crazy. And it's probably got this used with a GTX 6. 50, 650, not 1650, 650. This card has got to be over a decade old. Any poor shop who spends 500 bucks on this PC is going to sorely regret it. Okay, so right now, if you want to get into PC gaming at the lowest level possible, how much do you need to spend? Well, now we're looking at PCs with eight gigabytes of memory, which is something I really hate to do. But again, it will give you a passable gaming experience. Just know you're taking about 20% of the performance of your GPU right off the top by doing so. But for $740, you can get something like the AMD Ryzen 3 5300G GTX 1660 Super graphics card. Really nice little GPU for $740. Comes with a mouse keyboard, comes with all those kinds of things. Now, they're going to be budget quality, but you certainly can get into PC gaming for this. One of the things you're going to need to be able to manage is 256 gigabytes of SSD space is not a ton. You can, of course, add uh, a SATA hard drive to this. You possibly add an NVMe if you if you open it up and see in the specs. And again, here we are, HP Pavilion. HP just tends, these Pavilion tend to be the kind of lowest cost model. So $641. I have seen this one come all the way down to 600 at times. i3-10100. Perfectly capable CPU with a GTX 1650 Super and eight gigabytes of memory with 256 gigabyte SSD. Again, we can always add more storage. That's absolutely fine. These are gonna be OEM pre-built, so you're gonna have challenges upgrading the memory, challenges in other spaces. I would recommend if you can stretch here, stretch up, at least get the one that already has 16 gigabytes of memory so you don't have to worry about it. Remember to check out all the links down in the video description. We're going to update that every couple days with the best deals on the latest pre-built gaming PCs. And if you got value out of this video, give it a like. It makes a huge difference. Consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. And with that, we'll catch you on the next one.